Hello and welcome back to my writing channel. Let's talk about some bad writing habits. Every single writer is going to have some of these, these horrible tendencies that, especially when we're starting out writing, we let ourselves get into. And at one point, whether it's because someone advised us otherwise, or we just wake up and realize it one day, we realize it's not a good habit, it's not helping our writing. When that happens, we gotta break them. So I thought it would be an interesting video to share with you five very bad writing habits that I used to have Pretty sure I've gotten rid of most of these, but I might still be working on a couple of them. But they're things that I especially struggle with with my first writing projects, my first novels that I wrote. As with any other bad habit, the only way to break these habits are to realize that you have them, to pinpoint maybe the source of them in some cases, and then you have to make a plan how you're gonna fix it, whether it's doing something else or just cutting out that thing altogether and doing it and making yourself do it. And basically it's just building a new habit to replace the past habit. The first one that I really used to struggle with a lot was writing when I felt like it, or more specifically, writing only when I felt like it. I'm pretty sure this is one that most of us can share, especially when we start writing, because you discover it usually because you enjoy it and you realize this is a fun hobby. So it begins as something that you only do when you feel like it, and that's perfectly fine if it's just a hobby. My problem is I decided very early on that I wanted to get published, and that's a goal I'm still working towards. I really wanna be a published author. I don't just want to be a hobby writer. And if you want to be a published author, if you want this to become any type of serious work, you can't just write when inspiration strikes. Unfortunately, inspiration is very fickle and sometimes it's very fleeting. So it can last for a very nice like hour or two one day and then you might find you're not inspired for another month. Again, totally fine if you're just a hobby writer, but if you actually want to start pumping out novels, if you actually want to get through revisions, if you actually want to write a really good book that can be published, you have to put yourself on a better routine and you have to have some discipline. And discipline is not something that just happens like that. It's definitely something that you have to work on and build up. I think I can pretty much say that I have finally at last broken this terrible habit. Especially with my last book, I really put myself on a much stricter rhythm. Of course, there's always the temptation when you're not in the mood, when you're not feeling inspired, to just push it aside, especially because I'm not published yet. I don't have an agent or an editor giving me deadlines and making sure I stay accountable. I still am very reliant on myself, but that's also part of the reason that I have my Instagram and my YouTube channel and all these things to kind of give myself that accountability. Putting yourself on a writing routine and fighting against that temptation is really difficult. It's not as simple as just deciding I'm gonna start writing every day or I'm gonna start writing every weekend or whatever your schedule might be. It's not that simple. Actually doing the schedule and following through on a regular basis is the difficult part, but it's definitely something that can be done. Anyone can do it. And if you are someone who doesn't want to be a hobby writer and you do actually want to pursue publication or you just want to write more regularly, it's definitely something that can be done regardless of how strong the temptation may be for you. And once you manage to get past this bad habit and you manage to actually get yourself in a writing routine and make yourself write more regularly, regardless of inspiration, you'll find productivity just skyrockets in comparison. Unless you're one of these very rare, rare people who gets inspiration all the time, does anybody actually? Then you're definitely gonna get a lot more done and you're gonna be able to accomplish what you wanna accomplish with your writing. Another really bad habit that I'm still working on a little bit, but I've mostly gotten past, is writing to impress someone. And when I say someone, it can be a specific person that you want to read that book or that story, or it can just be a market or a specific type of person that you wanna write this book for and you really wanna impress them. So you write just for them. I wanna make a distinction here because it's not always a bad thing to write for a market, especially if you wanna get published. If you have a specific audience in mind, that's not always a bad thing because that is part of marketing and marketing is part of the book publishing industry. So if you wanna get published, like it or not, marketing is gonna be part of it. That being said, there's a difference between writing within the general bounds of what is acceptable or what is wanted within your genre or within your market or your audience or whatever it may be, and then writing to just impress somebody or writing to specific specifications that you think 
someone wants to see or some audience wants to see. I didn't struggle with this when I first started writing because I was still very much in that honeymoon phase where I just discovered I loved it and I was hobby writing. And for years when I was a teenager, when I was a preteen even, I was already writing stories and novels and I just wrote because I loved it. I wasn't even thinking about it. Even though I still wanted to get published, I didn't actually know what that entailed. But as I got older, as I got to be kind of a mid to late teenager and in my university years, I started to think a lot more about audience. I started to think a lot more about the types of people who could read my book. Sometimes I would even think specifically about people that I wanted to share my work with and I would write based on that. So I started writing things into my stories based on the trends that I was seeing within what I wanted to write or based upon what other writers were doing that I thought people seemed to like. Other readers, for example, I'd watch a, a booktuber or an author tuber talking about something positively and I think, okay, that's something that I need to get in my book. Thankfully, it didn't take me too long to realize that this was definitely hurting my writing. It was hurting my creativity. I wasn't able to think properly of ideas and outline things properly and plan for my book and even just write the sentences in my book. I wasn't able to because I was overthinking and I was trying to weigh so many different variables. I wasn't focusing on the story itself, on the characters themselves. I was really writing what I thought I needed to write and how I thought I needed to write. I think one of the main reasons why I got into this terrible habit was just because I got a little bit overwhelmed. I went from being a blissfully ignorant writer just writing because I loved it and I wasn't thinking about anything except just writing and creativity. And then I started getting more and more exposed to the writing world, to the publishing industry. I started reading more blogs and reading more books and watching people online, watching videos and just learning so much more. And also some of the stuff I was watching and reading was not necessarily the most constructive. I really don't like some of the, the content that you see online and in books probably, but I've just seen more of it online where people are very specific about this is good, this is bad, do this, don't do that. And I really try to avoid that in my videos. I try to share personal experiences and give you reasons why, but I'm not going to give you specific how to's and do's and don'ts about writing because there's so much that depends on you, that depends on your story. And I think I just got a little bit too overwhelmed in specific advice that was really just crippling my creativity and stopping me from actually discovering my story and my characters. Now I think I found a much better balance where I'm still thinking about market, I'm still thinking about who to write for or who my story is for without falling into the temptation of completely sacrificing all my creativity and my story for the sake of what I think you know, that market or some person wants to read in my book. I'm still most loyal to my story while trying to make sure that it fits within the sort of boundaries that are set by my genre and my, my type of story. It's not an easy habit to break because it is so multifaceted and there are so many different reasons why it could be a problem. And also, of course, because writing to market is still potentially a good thing, there's that as well. It's, it's not just black and white, it's a little bit gray sometimes, but at the end of the day, if you're writing just to impress someone, if you're trying to make your story fit within this box that you have sometimes made for yourself or that someone else has made for you, then it's probably not a good thing and you might be sacrificing the quality of some of your work. All right, so this one I still struggle with a little bit, but I've gotten so much better, and that is working myself up or just getting super, super stressed about the overall quality of my writing. Does this scene work? Is this character too, is this book even any good? Can I even write? The more serious I got about writing, I feel like the more pressure I put on myself and the more stressed I got about just ridiculous things. And again, I'm not talking about just, it, does this work, does this particular line work, or should I look at this a little bit more from this angle? I'm talking about just useless stressing, just shutting the computer and panicking and thinking to myself, what am I doing? Is this even good? It's just a waste of time honestly it's a huge waste of time it is normal I will say that maybe a lot of you watching this can also testify to that that you also feel this or you have felt this in the past it's pretty normal to doubt yourself especially as artists and as creators I think it's something we all struggle with but once that starts to climb once that anticipation and that stress starts to climb it gets actually to where you can't write and then you've just wasted a, write, a writing session, a writing day for nothing really, because it's not like you're worrying over something you can change. You're just general worrying about whatever you've done. I haven't fully broken this one. I will admit that very honestly, I still struggle with it sometimes. 
and it might be something that I'm struggling with for a very long time, maybe forever, but I'm gonna try and stay optimistic that one day I'll be able to get over this hurdle and I'll be able to stop thinking so much about that and just focus on the stuff that I can control. But who knows? Right now I'm still kind of struggling with it, but I've definitely gotten way better. I used to struggle with it a lot more, especially in more recent years, this past project, so this past year-ish, I've managed to get over that a lot. There were moments when I struggle with it, but I don't think it affected my first draft nearly as much as it's affected all of my past first drafts. Here comes a confession. I used to have the terrible habit of not revising my work. Even saying it out loud, even knowing it's in the past, I'm still embarrassed. When I was a young hobby writer, of course, this really did not occur to me and it didn't matter when I was just writing for fun. But even after I decided that I wanted to get published and even after I started trying to actively pursue that dream. Of course, now I realize that I was going about it in the wrong ways and all of that, that's another video. But you know, even after I'd gotten it in my head that I wanted to be published and thought I was making the right steps, I still struggled to, to find the value in revising. And even more than that, I don't think it even had to do with value as much as it had to do with just patience. I'm generally not a very patient person. So writing, impatient person, doesn't really mesh that well. Doesn't mean it can't exist, it's just gonna take a lot more effort and I had to train myself so much. Discipline, discipline, discipline. I had to learn how to be patient with my writing. With my second novel, I did try to revise just a little bit and then I realized that there were so many things missing in the novel. So actually that was kind of a bad way to start revising because what revising did was just reveal a bunch of problems in my book. And of course, you can fix problems, but when you find so many, it can be very discouraging, especially as someone who's not revised before. Basically what it did was open up my eyes to how bad my first draft was, and that was a little bit too much for me. Thankfully, the second time was a charm for me in this case, because with my next novel, it took me a while to get through my first draft. Maybe this was a good thing, actually, in, the, in hindsight. But by the time I got through that first draft, I had become a much more mature writer. I'd learned so much more about writing. I had read and watched so many videos about revisions and just how important they are. And I put so much effort into revising my last book and it made it, it took it from something that was a messy, kind of a wreck of a first draft and it turned it into something that I was really proud of at the end. So revisions were super, super good for me with this last draft. I got to try so many things. I did several rounds of revisions and now I've definitely learned that that is a terrible habit and it's it's a mindset as well. It's both a habit of just you know pumping out first drafts and throwing them aside and just feeling great about them, but also this mindset of I don't need to revise, it's not really necessary or big changes are not necessary because some people will revise but they don't wanna to touch the story, they just kind of like line edit. And revisions need to be more than that. You're not the same writer when you come out at the other end of that first draft as you are when you start it. So there will be stuff to change. The last very, very bad writing habit that I've had to break through the years and through experience is editing while I write. I can't tell you how many times I was advised not to edit as I wrote, and yet somehow I just plowed on through like with my eyes shut and my hands over my eyes, refusing to accept the truth that it's a bad, bad, bad idea to edit as you write. And when I say this, I'm not talking about changing little things because I still tend to do this and I don't really see a huge problem with changing little things as you go. If you're you know, browsing through something in, in the past chapters and you see something that really doesn't make sense or you see a typo or you see a problem, changing it really quickly, I don't really see a huge problem with that. But what I mean when I say edit as I write is actual substantial edits. Sometimes as I was writing, I would go back to past chapters, whether innocently just to check something or whether I was kind of just looking for something to edit because I felt like editing something. And I would browse through, I'd find something and I'd just rewrite it. I'd rewrite entire dialogue. I would take out a description. I'd decide something needed to change about the scene, about the room, about something. And I would go back and I would edit it right away without even having my draft finished, like without even having a basis of my story, I would edit stuff and fix it and tweak it. And sometimes it would, I would even spend a very long time doing that. There are so many reasons why this is a bad habit and I discovered them slowly, gradually. One of the things I realized was with my last book when I was doing all of those extensive revisions, and I would find scenes that I had just spent so much time on or I had written three or four times because I'd gone back and edited them and I would cut them because like I said, I had to cut a lot of words with that book. So I'd just have to cut them completely and it would feel so depressing because I had spent so long writing that and all of that effort 
was just gone like that because the scene didn't need to be there. Other times I would realize that I had changed something and that it didn't work. Either it was something that came before it or something that came after it, especially in the first draft if I would have gone back and changed something and then I got to a little bit later in the first draft and I realized that's why I did it that way in the first place and it actually needs to be like that. So then I'd have to go back and rechange it to what it was before. Hopefully I had saved it somewhere. If I had substantially changed stuff, hopefully I'd saved it in a different document, but normally I hadn't because normally it had been just sort of like little nitpicky things. I would just slowly kind of pick away at it until, you know, it was not the same. Kind of like when I'm cutting my bangs. I'm just like, I'll take a little bit here, I'll take a little bit here, and then all of a sudden you have a mess. Another reason this is not a good idea is that it slows you down. It just completely slows your first draft down. When you're first drafting, you need to get it out on the page. I think it's safe to say that I have really gotten the hang of this habit and I've gotten myself in a position where I know when it's sort of safe to edit a little thing or to tweak a little thing and when I need to just save it for revisions, I make a note of it. I've really built up a new habit of how to approach that temptation. Not just shove it aside or force myself not to touch it or not to look at my past stuff because that's something I, I can't possibly do. I know that's out of my reach. I have to be able to read my past stuff and I have to be able to look with a critical eye at my past stuff because I am an editor. I'm very much that type of person. I love to edit, I love to nitpick. So I can't get over that necessarily but I've just trained myself how to respond to that. So when that nitpickiness strikes and I really, really want to change something, I just write it down so I can get it out of my system. I can save it for later. I feel like I've accomplished that. I've not just let that go to waste. I've not just, you know, forgotten about it and then it'll bug me later. I have it written down, but I'm not going to succumb to the temptation and potentially destroy my first draft. So those are five bad writing habits that I have had to work so hard on breaking. And now that I have either managed to break them or I've gotten so much better that they don't feel like a habit really anymore, I can definitely say that they were bad and that if you manage to get through them, if you also struggle with these habits, you will find so many benefits from making it through that tunnel and to the other side. Of course, there are still other bad habits that I'm either still working on or I've had in the past. I can do another video about this if you'd like to see more. But in the meantime, let me know in the comments below if you share any of these bad habits or of course, if there are any other bad habits that you're working on or you've had to work on in the past, let me know in the comments below. Maybe it's something that I haven't even thought of before or maybe it's something that someone else watching this video can learn from or might be able to at least relate to. We all have them, let's face it. We all have bad habits. Some of them we share, some of them may be very unique to us, but they're still there and we still have to work on them. And working on them may be difficult, but it is so, so worth it to reap the benefits of a better writing routine. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by giving it a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you want to see every time I upload a new writing video, I upload every Saturday for the time being. But of course, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more regular updates. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you very soon in another writing video.